もしやコスモではコスモミッツミスリーコスモ AP ラミデュアリースポーツ I'm sick of screwing with the floor, so I'm going to do something fun for a while, which is build an engine.、Uh, as I mentioned before, I'm building a six quart engine using the Cosmo housings and GSL SE iron. So, this is the GSL SE center iron, and this is the Cosmo center iron. My idea for this engine is low end and mid range torque. So, I need to make the primary ports on the GSL SE. Iron look like the primary ports on the Cosmo 13B. The opening and closing times are the same across both irons, so all I'm going to do is extend the GSL SE iron down to have the same amount of port area as the Cosmo iron. This is the port template I'm using on the primary port. I'm not going to port up at all, I'm just going to port down. It's not quite as big as the Cosmo 13B port, but the problem is. There just isn't enough material in the casting to go that large without heavily tapering the port down. Now, I'm just going to cover the non porting areas with duct tape、uh, to protect them in case of accidents with the grinder. And yes, it has happened. Put a good four layers of duct tape on here. Now that the port shape is roughed in, it's time to smooth all of these transitions. This bottom part should transition smoothly into the runner, and all this rough area here needs to be smoothed out, as well as this ledge that's naturally part of the casting. I'm also going to smooth all of this casting flash out to promote better flow.
That's the majority of the port work on the first one done. There's still just a little bit to do. I got to clean up the edges just a little bit. I've spent a lot of time working on the transition here and here to try to get them as smooth as possible, as well as the uh, the lip here. But for now, I'm going to turn the iron over, do the other port, and then once I get them both the same, I'll do the little bit of finishing work and polish up the runners. And now using the Dremel snake, I'll just remove some of the casting flash from the runners. And finally a slight polish with the sanding drum on a very low speed. And at this point, we're all done. Tape can come off. Marker can be removed. There is one ported center iron. I'm really not doing much porting on these end irons at all. I'm just going to smooth out this little bit of weird casting right here. These uh, six port end irons already have a huge amount of port area, and they close incredibly late. Uh, so anything that you do to port these basically results in the drastic reduction of low end torque and that's the last thing that I want to achieve with this engine. This side needs just a little more work than the other side because there's a little bit of a casting flaw right there between the casting and the machine surface that I'd like to smooth out, but still only a few minutes. It's now time to do the exhaust porting. On the right is a second gen 13B housing. On the left is my Cosmo 13B housing. So the second gen opens the exhaust port at about 71 degrees and closes it at 48 degrees. The Cosmo is far more conservative, opening at 75 and closing at 38. That was designed to maintain fuel economy and uh, for the thermal reactor, but it's quite restrictive. What I think I'm going to do is open the exhaust port at the same degree as the second gen, so change the 75 degrees to a 71 degrees, and then I'm going to go halfway between the second gen and Cosmo. That should be the best compromise between flow and creating overlap with the intake port. And overlap is something I really want to avoid because it reduces low end torque and fuel economy. It took about 20 minutes to get this right, but this tape represents the squared off timings of a second gen port. Now I just have to split this difference and then I can draw out my port shape and begin cutting. 
I traced out my new port shape with marker and now I think that I can peel this off and apply it to the other housing. At least I hope so, otherwise I'm doing all those measurements again. And after about half an hour of positioning, it's damn near close enough. And number two. Those lines suck, but they're going to have to do the job. Trying to keep the port shape straight without a hard scribe line will drive you friggin' insane. Uh, I think I've done the best I can do here, so now all I have to do is remove a whole bunch of this extra material and taper the port into the runner. The real trick will be making the other one the same. At this point, the first exhaust port is done. I'm going to leave it a little rough until I do the other one, and that way I have some material to work with to make them both match. The real trick is not the first port, it's the second port, because the second one has to match the first one. And it's especially difficult when you're just dealing with some marker lines instead of a hard scribe line. After some hours of porting, I now have two ports that are close enough, so the final polish and adjustments will be done with these sanding rolls. And there's two ported rotor housings.